Hi there, this is Benjamin from Benjamin Crudwig Fiber Arts and Designs. And by this point, um, you have gone through the first three lessons of my new course, How to Crochet a Raglan Style Sweater from the Top Down. Today, we are doing lesson four, um, which is all about the neckline and the collar. So you'll notice that I have a new sweater um, next to me at this point, and this is just to show you a different way to go about making this sweater. I made this sweater a little bit more tight fitting um, for myself, so that's why it's a little bit more snug on the mannequin here. And there's a different neckline than there was on the other sweater. So this one is more of a mock turtleneck. You could also maybe call it a cowl neck sweater. Um, and that's the kind of neckline that I'm going to be making in the next portion here. Um, so I did my neck measurement um, in the last video and I did it at 18 inches um, and with it being three stitches per um, inch it's going to be 54 stitches. So the great thing um, about this lesson is that we're going to learn a new stitch. We're going to learn what's called the foundationless single crochet. So what that means is that um, most of the time when you start a row you're going to do a chain stitch and thus you put your slip knot on your hook, yarn over, pull through, pull through, and you just keep going and you get what's called a foundation chain. In this tutorial, we're going to do foundationless single crochet, and that's going to give us a much more flexible um, neckline. Um, it's not as tight as a chain stitch would be, so that's why we're going to want to do it, because it's going to have to go over our heads and make sure that it fits that way. So to start, you're going to chain two. So I have one, two, and then there's a third stitch on my hook. I'm going to insert my hook in that first chain that I made. I'm going to yarn over, pull through a loop, so I now have two loops on my crochet hook, yarn over, and pull another loop through. So this gives me one single crochet on my um, foundation chain, or foundation row. The next thing that we're going to do is insert our hook into, so there's two holes here, so here's the loop on my hook, here is a stem, and here is a stem. I'm going to go into that first stem that is closest to my working yarn and furthest away from my hook. Sometimes this is kind of tight, so it takes some fussing to get in there. So I'm going to yarn over, pull one loop through, yarn over, pull that loop through both loops on my hook. So let's do that again. So there's this part and this part. I'm going to go into the leftmost part, yarn over, pull a loop through, yarn over, pull a loop through. So I'm going to repeat that just one more time. So there are two places that I can put my hook, either here or here. I'm going to put it into this far one on the left. Yarn over, pull through, and pull through. So you can see this is already a lot more um, stretchy or flexible than a chain would be. So we're going to do as many of these as we need for our neckline, and in my case it's 54. I've already done four, so I just need to do 50 more. Alright, so I've done my 54 foundationless single crochets. You can see that it has quite a bit of stretch. It'll be fine to be getting around my head. Yeah, it's going to be just fine. So it's at this point that we're going to start working the round. I need to grab a stitch marker now because to know where we are when we're working, we're going to want to make sure that we put in a stitch marker. That way, when we go back around, we will be where we started. 
So it looks like here there is a bottom and a top. The top has all of these V's and the bottom is pretty much just these little bumps. We're going to want to make sure that we do not twist our foundation chain here or our foundation row um, because otherwise that'll be really hard to fix later on down the road. So I'm just going to insert my hook into this first single crochet that we made and I'm going to single crochet. Um, most times when you see something like this you would see me actually slip knot um, to bind off that row but since we're doing a seamless sweater, I'm just going to go right into the single crochet. I'm going to place my stitch marker into that stitch, and I'm going to start single crocheting along this row. You can see it's much easier to get my hook in here than if I had just chain stitched. So since I'm doing a mock turtleneck, I'm going to go for a good maybe three or four inches, um, and then I will come back and work on placing the next steps. All right, so now I have finished doing the collar of my sweater. So this is the top and this is the bottom. Um, however, the way that we're working it is since it's from the top down, um, our working stitches are actually going to be traveling down the sweater. So I did about, uh, let's see, I think four inches, four and a half inches of collar. So when I fold it down, it'll be approximately two to two and a quarter inches of actual collar. You'll see that where we started, right here, there is a little bit of a jog there. But to take care of that, at one point I will just take the tail from the very beginning and stitch it in, and it'll even it out and make it look like one even collar edge. All right, so I switched out my stitch marker in the back for a white one. Um, because we're going to be placing our raglan increases now. So I have four other stitch markers in a different color. That way I can make sure that I place them in the right places. So I'm just going to set this aside for now. So to make sure that I do this right, I need to do a little bit more math. Uh, so we found out that with the three inch ease measurement, um, that my chest is 41 inches, which is 124 stitches in our gauge. And then for my body, I measured my total body girth measurement as 46 inches. Um, however, I wanted to add a little bit more ease into that because it felt like the armholes would be a little too small. So I added a total of 10 inches. So that's five inches on each side. Um, that seems a little weird but it works out in the end, promise. <laughs> so now we have 51 inches, which is 153 stitches. Um, so we are going to do a little bit of math to figure out where to place our stitch markers. So when we're thinking, this is the top of our sweater. This is our back here. So I'm gonna say that that's our white stitch marker we're going to want to place our other stitch markers somewhere along these lines. Um, so these are going to be the blue stitch markers. This is going to give us a few ideas of what, um, what we're going to need to calculate. So this whole space, when we get down um, to, to where we're going to split the arms off from the body, is going to need to be 153 stitches long. Uh, I'm going to go up to 154 just because I like rounding up to an even number. So that gives us between the body, so if we do body minus chest, that's 154 minus 124, and that gives me 30 stitches. 
If I divide that in half, that's going to give me each armhole, which is 15 stitches. So I know that I'm going to have to have 15 stitches here, 15 stitches here, and then we're going to split the difference um, for the chest measurement. So the chest measurement is 124 stitches, and so I'm just going to do quick math here. 124 divided by 2, 62. So we're going to have 62 stitches in the front, and 62 stitches in the back. All right. So to keep going with this, um, we're going to want to know what um, ratio this is. So the 62 in the front is 62, and this is total stitches for the whole body, over 154. And we're going to want to know how many stitches in 54. And this is because our neckline is 54 stitches around, and X is going to give us just one of these measurements. So this is body, and I'm going to do neckline here, so neck. So we're going to do some cross multiplication here. Should be pretty simple. So that gives me a measurement of 21.7 for x. Um, and I'm just going to round that up to 22. So that means right here is 22, back here is 22. So that leaves us, out of 54, that leaves us 10 stitches, because 22 plus 22 is 44, 54 minus 44 is 10. So I need 5 stitches in each arm area. So we're going to move the notebook now that we know how many stitches need to go where. I placed my stitch marker in the first stitch, so this is stitch number one. Because this is the back, we're actually going to split that first measurement of 22 in half. Um, so I'm going to do 11, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, and I'm going to place my stitch marker in the 11th stitch. So now I'm going to count 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, place the stitch marker in that 5th stitch, and I just want to make sure that I am consistent with that. So I could always place this, the stitch after the 11th, which would actually be the first stitch of the next section, but I prefer putting it in the last stitch of each section. So now I am going to count out 22, 20, 21, 22, place stitch marker in the 22nd stitch, do 5 for the other armhole. 10, 11. So now I know that I have exactly the amount of stitches that I expected. So you can see, if I just pull this up, here's my back with the stitch marker in white. Then I go 11 stitches here to the blue, 5 to blue, 22 around to blue, 5 to blue, and then just back to the middle section here. So now uh, we are going to start learning how to do raglan increases and that will be in lesson number five. So come back and I will teach you how to do a raglan increase.